We think we're so clever with our stealth fighters sneaking behind enemy radar arrays like undetectable air ninjas. Well, it turns out Luna Moths have been doing that way before we even knew what radar was. <laughs> Hi there guys, Julian here for DNews. The Luna Moth is quite a sight to behold. At three to four and a half inches across, they're huge flying bugs. They're a gorgeous green hue and they have distinct, elegant tails on each wing. The thing is though, they don't actually need those tails to fly, so what are they for? Well, according to research published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, those tails are actually sophisticated countermeasures. After closed windows and candles, the number one enemy to moths are insect-eating bats. Now, while the often quoted fact that bats are blind is baseless, it is true that many bat species and all the species in North America rely on echolocation instead of sight for hunting in the darkness. Now, these microbats send out an ultrasonic ping at around 14,000 to 100,000 hertz. The sound waves bounce off the environment, come back to the bat's huge ears, and the bat gets a mental image of its surroundings. Radar works in a similar way. It bounces radio waves off objects instead of sound, but the concept is essentially the same. The problem for flying bugs is those flapping wings bounce back a lot of sound in a distinct way. They're like a ringing dinner bell for the bat. Now, some insects can pick up the ultrasound and stop flapping when they're in danger, but bats have responded by going quiet after they spot the bugs and are homing in. Plus, if the moth is in mid-flight, they don't really have the option to just stop flapping. So Luna moths have developed another strategy. Their sweeping tails throw off the bat's echolocation. Researchers proved this recently by taking a big group of Luna moths and snipping the tails off half of them. For good measure, they also had a batch of snout moths, plain old no-tailed brown bugs, to act as a control. They put them in a room with eight hungry bats and tied them to the ceiling with fishing lines so they just spun around and around like those toy airplanes you had as a kid until your dad hit his head on it and broke it out of rage. Now the result? Well, they're not pretty for the snout moths. Nearly all of them were bat food. Tailless Luna moths did better with 50% of them falling prey, but the Luna moths with tails passed with flying colors. They were snagged by bats only 35% of the time. Their fluttering tails made them less detectable. Stealth aircraft work in exactly the same way. They're designed so their shapes deflect radio waves away from the receiver. If you look closely, there's almost no 90 degree angles on stealth jets because right angles reflect radar waves back to the source like nobody's business. That's why America's first stealth jet, the F-117 Nighthawk, looks like Porygon, though modern ones are curved to be more aerodynamic and have fewer flat reflective sides. While their shapes make them unstable and harder to design, the ability to fly in hostile skies and get the job done unscathed has made stealth aircraft the way of the future. Likewise, Luna Maws are just trying to accomplish a mission, if you know what I mean. You see, Luna Maws belong to the Saturnidae family, which has vestigial mouths and don't even have digestive tracts. Their only goal once they get out of the cocoon is to mate, and they've only got a week to do it before they exhaust their stored fat and die. They fly around in the night trying to find each other by their pheromone sense, but if they get grabbed by a bat before they can ever make the beast with four wings, their genetic line ends. So moths with tails have an advantage and are more likely to make more moths with tails, at least until the bats get wise and develop a new strategy. Just like how China now claims they've developed new radars that will make stealth fighters obsolete. I guess there's no finish line in an arms race. As eerily similar as they are, the moths were not the inspiration for stealth tech. But don't worry, there are tons of other times scientists have looked at nature and said, well, why don't we just do that? Like when they took a cue from mantis shrimps and made a camera that can see cancer. You can learn all about that over here. What's your favorite cat and mouse example of two species locked in eternal struggle to outwit each other? Obviously cat and mouse is already said, so you can't choose that, but I will accept Tom and Jerry. Let us know in the comments, and I'll see you next time on D News.